great amazing and now she's on the campaign trail and um, she's promising water supplies and um, inaugurating one at Cottonwood the election must be near at hand she clearly is on the campaign trail but it, it, it proves how right Mr. Patterson was when he said that she was the, con the party's only hope for a fifth term um, not its best hope its only hope what he clearly had in mind was that after 18 years in, well it was pretty nearly 18 years at that point 17 years on in office um, most of which the party was led by him as prime minister or the government was led by him as prime minister um, people continue people continue to be in desperate need of such fundamental provisions as drinking water and there's a lot of talk nowadays about pit toilets in schools and all this kind of thing very very depressing but Sister P is now promising put her back give her the fifth term give her her own mandate um, and all these problems well she hasn't gone to the point of talking about all these problems she's she's talking about water supply systems right one in Cottonwood to provide water for 3,000 people when you consider all the hundreds of thousands of people probably in this country who haven't got access to adequate water supplies um, 300 people is merely a scratch <laughs> on the anyway let's let's go to the break we'll be back shortly ok thank you very much we're back here online um, traffic euro Trafigura is clearly causing a fair amount of discomfort to the government and um, it has well it can't up to now tell us that the money which the Prime Minister ordered sent back to Trafigura has in fact been sent back um, up to the latest we heard it had not and um, uh, the question is at this point whether there's any real intent to send it intention to send it back um, in fact I gather that I was talking to somebody um, over the weekend from Sister P's constituency and I gather that there's a great deal of confidence down there that that um, when she gets her her mandate um, she's going to use that traffic euro money to you know make life better for the people in that constituency <laughs> I don't know I don't know where they get that from but I gather it is a widespread belief um, the the parties um response to traffic euro seems to be to launch an attack on the parish councils which have been um, since the last parish council election dominated most of them by the almost all of them by the Jamaica Labour Party and um all sorts of allegations of corruption in the conduct of parish councils business have been made by the government um, particularly 
by the Ministry of um, Local Government. Uh, up to now, they, they haven't really come forward with any com convincing evidence in relation to any one of these councils. Um, there's another story breaking now, which, well, that has broken, carried by the Herald yesterday um, about the Hanover Parish Council. Um, the story on the front page says that signs of cronyism have emerged at the opposition Jamaica Labour Party controlled Lucy Parish Council where Mayor Lester Crooks and the council have been accused of improper conduct. Based on reports, the mayor who owns a trucking company has, through his intermediaries, taken control of the construction site of the new Fiesta Hotel in the parish. The mayor, through his trucking company, has taken control of the construction site of the new um, Fiesta, what's the name of it? Fiesta Hotel in the parish taken control of the construction site through his trucking company. Now what does that mean? A construction of a hotel is going to involve a hell of a lot more than trucking. <laughs> According to the reports, L3 Uh, Brothers Construction Company is the company is the primary employer of all services and purchaser of material uh, used on the site. Well, it, the impression that one gets from following up the story is, is that these are rather wild allegations at the moment. Um, apparently, Mr. The, 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 the mayor owns a trucking company. Um, the hotel, in any event, is not, a, as I understand it, a parish council project. Um, the trucking company has a contract to do trucking on the site for, for the um, to you know bring in supplies and so on for the contractors and um, the story seems to me a little far fetched you know but one let us hear the evidence eh? let us hear the evidence and what is happening with the St. Parish St. Catherine Parish Council um, they had um, they were accused of some fraud and um, the matter was reported to the police and the police are supposed to have sent the um, sent the report to the director of public prosecutions and I take it that one may now expect an imminent arrest maybe of the entire council <laughs> but um, imminent arrests imminent um, imminent charges by the DPP might um, I mean it might be five years well yes five years the 
last imminent charge we heard about, uh, Mr. Crawford, was imminently to be charged. Um, that was in, I think, in August, no? Early in August, 4th of August, 19... 2002 it's now 2007 um, so four years at least have gone a little over four years and um, <laughs> so far as I know Mr. Crawford no charges have been have been put forward against Mr. Crawford so I don't know let's see what happens with the parish council no? <laughs> but a lot of words are being circulated against these parish councils and one gets the impression that it has more to do with the politics of the upcoming elections than, um, than anything else and Dr. Peter Phillips is coming up with his new crime plan I wonder if that includes a state of emergency um, usually when elections are being held over the last four elections 93 97 uh, 93, 97, 2002. Something, some kind of eruption occurs in Tivali Gardens. Um, are they going to try that one again? <laughs> anyway, let's get on with it. Let's go to our telephones. But no, we are just almost on the break. So, should we take the break and then go to the telephones? Okay, thank you very much. We're back on land. Hello? Hello? Morning, sir. I'm fine. Not too bad, thank you. Uh, Mr. Perkins, um, today I'm very disturbed about some statements that I heard um, George Lee made. George Lee? And, uh, he has been making these utterances since Wednesday night of last week. Uh -huh. And I believe that um, this morning is a um, pronouncement on um, TPJ. Really, really low. Uh, His pronouncements uh, where? On TPJ uh -huh. this morning. Uh -huh. um, the mayor said that he has information that um, guns have been stockpiled in a particular community. Let me say the Nagwood community. Well, he said that um, last week. Yes, and I, I, I am wondering if this is the case, why is it that the mayor is not giving the police this information? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I even spoke to the, um, the police I command in Pomar, asking them if this is so, if they have this information, why do they don't want to get out these criminals? Uh -huh. um, Mr. Perkins, I now want to go and talk show to, to really speak on certain issues. Because, but this, I, I, I do not know what is the motive of, of George Lee as it relates to spreading rumors. Yes. Right? But, and, and, no, and, but I, I tell you something, Mr. G in fairness, Mr. George Lee is not the only person who has said this. This was said by Bishop Blair and, and, and uh, Mr. Horace Levy of the Peace Management. Um, commission and um, what is more it was also said by the not in relation specifically to Portmore but um, by, uh, in relation to the stockpiling of guns with a view to making the coming elections a bloody one this was said by the um, by the commissioner of police himself I, I, I think it is, it, it is the wrong move to to create this this idea out there that in fact um, guns are being stockpiled because if it is really so, then the police has a responsibility. Well, I should have thought, sir. I should have thought that from the perspective of the commissioner, 
if he has that information, that he would be doubling up uh, the investigative process. Yes. Uh, locating the gun, trying, to, setting out to locate the areas in which these, or the premises in which these guns are being stockpiled, and who it is that is doing it, and um, and a capturing the guns, b arresting and charging the people yeah. who are who are doing it. Mr. Right? Martin. I can't see. In what way it helps the commissioner in the, the carrying out of his duty to the people of this country um, to be broadcasting on radio and television that guns are being stockpiled and all over the place to make the elections the bloodiest ever or the bloody Mr. Bur Mr. Bur one. In Portmore, I, I, I have all confidence in the police because they are on top of the situation in Portmore as well as the crime. You, um, you, you, you haven't told us who you are speaking. What was that, Mr. Bergen? I said you haven't told us who you are. I, oh, I'm Andrew Pickney. I'm the counsel for Nagwa Division. And the oh, Mayor yes. Uh -huh. um, Mr. Bergen, the police, they have done a tremendous job in Portmore. Crime has dropped significantly in Portmore. Uh -huh. And now it would be, it's been, um, I mean, I reverse. If the police, uh, um, Nagwa in fact is very close to the 100 man police station. Uh -huh. And if the police over there uh, do not have this information, and the mayor has this information, and is, is more or less keeping it to himself. It's not just the mayor, the it. commissioner of police, I think, may have it. Well, uh, well then, uh, if, if that is the case, then we need to take necessary actions to collect these guns and get these criminals off the street. But they look, sir. The impression that I'm getting from all this blabber is that there is greater interest in um, get, putting that information into the minds of the people of this country. A, the guns are being stockpiled. B, the election is likely to be a very bloody one. Right? We are all endangered. And um, then, then there is great, seems to be greater interest in doing that, agitating the people, than in clear, dealing with the problem. I, I, I don't know why. I don't, I don't even know Nagwad, uh, Mr. Perth. Nagwad is a is like an inner city community within Portmore. Uh, I beg your pardon. I, I, I think that um, the mayor believes that everyone who lives in these kind of communities must be involved in some criminal activity uh -huh. or must be stockpiling guns. Right? Does he, and, and like does he really that. believe it? I think he does. Oh. I think he does. Uh -huh. Else he would not just come out of the blue and um, I made these statements. Then why, it's, a deliberate why, plot. it's a deliberate plot, I believe, to destabilize the, 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 the society to get everyone thinking that this, was, this is going to be a very bloody year, a, a bloody uh -huh. election, and, and all that stuff. And that there is a need for severe, extreme, and resolute yeah. measures? <laughs> well, they are, they are known for that kind of stuff, so um, it wouldn't surprise me if, if in the very near future there's a declaration stating that there is a need for these measures to be in place. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know, sir. I don't know whether guns are being stockpiled, right? Well, I, I, I do hope, though, that... And they, if they, guns they, are being stockpiled, I, I would hope that... You know, all responsible officials and all responsible citizens would cooperate in yes. putting an end to that. But um, merely sort of going on television or wherever and making statements and frightening people, I don't know that that contributes in any way to this. <laughs> right? responsible person. And therefore, I'm left to wonder what is the motive in doing this. Mr. Perkins, I want to categorically state that in no way we, we, we are supporting any form of criminal behavior. Any person caught with an illegal firearm should face the law of this land. Uh -huh. And um, it doesn't matter for whatever reason which part you want to support. We cannot condone any form of criminal behavior. And I do hope that if this is so, that person will desist from doing so. Right? 
But I'm, from what I'm saying, I'm the, there's no information to that effect. But I hope though that the, 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 the mayor of Fulmer will be very responsible in his statements also. Because this alone can only serve to, to create fear. I, I, wonder if, I wonder if we could get the mayor on the program. Um, perhaps we'll have a shot at that. Trying to get the mayor. Right? Um, that who, that um, he will um, um, tell um, the, 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 the Jamaican wider public um, the, the, the houses or homes or yard or wherever these guns are being stored so that the police can, can go and retrieve these fires. Well, I don't know, but they, they, if he has that information, what he ought to have done with it was pass it on to the police. Well, well Mr. President, that's... Um, he, he'll be having a meeting um, tomorrow with, the, with the, the, the police in Portmore. Oh, is that so? He this statement from Wednesday, so, I mean, persons gathering these guns could have killed, I mean, a, a couple a couple people well, well. Um, over the last couple of days. Or, or move the guns. Or move the guns, <laughs> as a matter of fact. So, I mean, I think that, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a responsible person, you should just run quickly, run with it to the police station. Yes. And let them deal with the matter. Yes, indeed. All right, I, so do, I do hope that, Mr. Perkins, that you lend some clarity to, to the situation. Yes, I hope so. Okay, Mr. Perkins. All right, thank you very much. Okay, hello? 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 Yes, good morning, sir. Morning, Mr. Perkins. Uh-huh. How are you doing, sir? Not too bad. How are you? Well, not too bad. I do that the crime is on my mind this morning. Crime is on your mind? Yes, sir. On whose mind is crime not? <laughs> well... That's why, I don't want, uh, that's why I don't want some people to throw cold water on the police hierarchy and strategy that they come up with on last week, you know. What is that? Because, the, the um... What and, strategy uh, is that? I, I would like to know... Um, what is the strategy? They, that they come up with? Uh-huh. Well, every now and then, you know, they come up with a strategy, you know, and uh, when you have heard Mr. Mr. Perk is in trying to curve crime, should be welcome by all of us. Uh-huh. Hello? Any, any what? Any effort uh-huh. um, come up by any, like, you know, like the police hierarchy or so on to deal with crime. I think, you know, we should all, um, you know, commend that effort, you know. Uh-huh. Um, well, uh, I don't know, know sir, what we want to do. Some people throwing cold water on it and, you know, eh? surprise me. I beg your pardon? I hear some people throwing cold water on it. Well, but the, the thing is this, that if ever, every so often mm-hmm. the police and the minister come up with a new strategy for dealing with crime. Yes. And we know the history of these strategies. Yes. The, none of them have succeeded. But the criminals are relentless, you know, so they have to be relentless, too. So. It, it's not a matter of being relentless. They, what we want is not just a strategy for dealing with crime, ah. but a strategy that is likely to, to be successful. Right? Yes. Now, if, if we have some people who are coming up every time the, there's a crime the crime surges um, there's a new strategy for dealing with it right? Uh-huh. a new crime plan or something um, and it doesn't work why None should we have any eh? None of it doesn't work well where, where, when has it worked so think, you don't think things should put that into the, in, the, in, in, um, in the crime of this country oh, if I don't think what Kingfish. Who? Kingfish. Put a, a dent? Yeah. I they, don't they know what dent have they put. So. What, what is the dent that they've put in the crime? Well, I mean, we have, <laughs> the, I mean the, the, the drugs that I mean, <coughs> move around the country Sorry. and, you know, what go along with it. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a prevalent. Hold on. Is there a, a, do, are we, can we be confident mm-hmm. that there's any less movement of drug, drugs through Jamaica? than there was? Well, I think so, because, um, you know, and one of the people, um, you can see, well, they, they, well they, they lock up some of them, and, they, you know, some of them are going, uh, you know, you know sir, going undercover. So, locking you know. up people is one thing. Convicting them is another. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, they are, they hey, hold on, hold on. The big, supposedly big fish uh-huh. that have been locked up uh-huh. have been locked up on ex- on the basis of extradition demands uh-huh. made by the United States. Yes. Right? And the evidence on which these demands have been made. Uh-huh. One of the things that strikes me as disgraceful 
is that the Jamaican authorities should be prepared to extradite a Jamaican citizen to some foreign country uh-huh. without seeing the base, without examining the basis of the charge on which that person is to be extradited. Well, maybe that's why there's a delay in the process. Yes. But yeah. the, the, it seems to me that they are determined to go through with it. Well, yeah, so we, have, we have to wait and see. And, the and the when the column. president, when the president of the United States, uh-huh. the country that is requesting the extradition of these persons, uh-huh. stands up in public and says that these men are, are what? Uh, what is the term he used? King... Uh, Kingpin. Like King 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 uh, yes. You don't think that that would be prejudicial to their getting a fair trial in the United States? Yes, Mr. Perkins, but if the president, that you have, have a president of the United States over there, you know, that, you know, I don't think, um, you know, No, hold on. Service. Hold on a little bit. He may call it an statement. Hold there. on a little bit. The uh-huh. Jamaican state exists for the protection and security of the Jamaican people. Am I right? Yes. Of Jamaican citizens. Huh? Yes. And you are going to send a person to be tried in another country, Uh the president of which country has said that these men are drug kingpins, Yes, Isn't that a matter to be determined by the courts yes, on Mr. the basis Perkin, of evidence that, presented? Yes, Mr. Perkin, but that doesn't, that doesn't take away anything from, the, from justice. No? I mean, it, I beg your pardon? I mean, when I said don't take away anything from justice, I want you to get me right. You know? I mean, that doesn't take away anything from, I mean, like the Jamaican government being carried out on its lawful duty. Yes, but what is its lawful duty? Well, its lawful duty is to harm. Um, um, crime in this country by when a narcotic or by any other, way, other means. But look here, sir. Mm-hmm. I should have thought that the first thing to determine is whether there is a prime prima facie case mm-hmm. against these men, whether there is evidence on the basis of which they should be sent to trial. But Mr. Perkins, Hold on a moment. Some? Okay, thank you very much. Back here. Yes, sir Perkins. Yeah. Yes, sir. So no, you, you, you realize uh-huh. that none of these men that you're talking about, yeah. they, they were operating in the United States. Whatever yes. they were doing, they were doing here in Jamaica. Yes. And if, if what they are accused of doing is what they were doing, yeah. then they were committing criminal acts here in Jamaica. Yes. Now, the Jamaican police have come up with no evidence concerning their they haven't charged them I'm for Perkins, anything these that they're supposed to do in liars, Jamaica huh? eh? Mr. Perkins those these men have some top rank liars yes so why they don't crack the case I mean, I'm I mean like, crack the case all these things have been all these arguments have been presented right so we are the trial are the trial no we are with um, you know they, they in are, the meantime the men are locked up let me ask you something but, <laughs> do you think that if the Jamaican government were to demand the extra, or request the extradition of an American citizen on similar grounds, that the United States government would even listen to them? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that is true. That is true. That is true. But anyway, what I want to go on to say, I listen, I hear Mr. Uh, George Lee this morning. Mm-hmm. You know, but I didn't hear him talk about stockpile of gun. I didn't hear, you didn't hear what? He yeah, didn't talk about stockpile of guns. I didn't hear that come out of his mouth. He didn't talk about criminal activity. I mean, no he man, he talked about... Guns. No, no, no. He talked yeah. about guns being stockpiled. Yeah, I, didn't, I never hear that, believe yeah, me. Man. Yes, 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 he did what talk we know, about it. We know that criminal moving from one hen of the country to the other, um, from time to time, they do that, right? And no one can really deny that. That is a fact, right? So, but I... I and, and, you know, no, so what you, was argued was... What was said was that the guns were being stockpiled, I didn't right? Believe, uh-huh. And the accusation, the, the allegation has been made 
that these guns are being stockpiled for use in the election. Oh, I didn't hear Or in relation to the election. I, I, I hear him wrong then because I didn't hear him yeah. talk about the stockpile of guns. But one of the things, I hope the, the minister and the police are like, I hope they have this in their, 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 their crime strategy. Um, like randomly search and raid and search for guns because, you know, we, we realize that, you know, the, 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 the gun is... Randomly raid and, and search, search for, guns. for guns. Mr. Perth, Let me ask, you, like, you know what, uh, you, hold on. You know what a large part of the problem of this country is? Yeah. The people of Jamaica, the Jamaican man uh -huh. and woman, you know, they, they still are carrying with them uh -huh. the stigma of slavery. Why is it that? Yes. Because you, you, you have, you have no sense of your own worth so as what's a wrong human being. No, hold on. Hold on just a moment. What did you say a while ago? Randomly search. Um, random Randomly search. search. Right? For you guns. mean just just walk into anybody's house that they feel like walking it's, into? No, Mr. And Mr. Search Mr. Perkins. Mr. Perkins, on the road every day, searching vehicle, and most times they're out oh, there and searching, like, for um, giving traffic tickets and so on. And for what? Mr. Giving Perkins, what? Traffic ticket and so on. Most of the time, it's the police out there. Some of them will have got M16 and shotgun out uh -huh. there stopping vehicle searching and giving them ticket and so on. What I am saying, yes. Mr. and a lot of times. No, but the point that, that I am making, sir, so, uh -huh. the idea of randomly searching uh -huh. people, right, suggests that, you know, the, these people are not. I mean, hold on. You think the police would go and randomly search people in Norbrook? Well, we are huh? right now. Is that the they people who live up on Jacks Hill and those people places. You no, man, I hear them search some here. I really wouldn't think they would have searched, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Randomly? Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, man. We hear them search some here. What do you mean by randomly? Huh? What do you mean by randomly? I mean, don't let anybody just, I mean, get up and just, just, just go on the street and say, okay, this morning we're going to stop some vehicle and search for guns. Yes. Right. Yeah, are we going to, like, um, we're going to go in that area and we're going to... You know, we probably know some so you see a man walking, hold on, guns. you see a man or a woman walking coming down the road, and you say, stop the woman, stop the man, come, take off your clothes, <laughs> right? Stop, Mr. Perkins, they don't do that every day. What? They don't do that every day. And is it right? No, I am not saying it is right, Mr. Perkins. Then Perkin. why do you no, want Mr. to Perkin. see it done? Mr. 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 Perkins. Hold on. This, Mr. Why do you want to see more of it done? Right, and hold on a little bit. Yes. And are, are you expecting that it will also be done to you? Uh, yes, man. Because I'm not carrying any guns. Eh? guns. I'm not carrying any. So you don't mind a man just... I don't have a problem with that. You don't have a problem with it? You have a problem with that? Yes. Why? How do you mean? Because I don't think that any man should be have his fingers running all over me, searching me, without having any any reason. To suspect that I, I have something on me that I should. Let me ask you that question. Oh, that police run your finger away and the gunman run your finger away. Which one do you prefer? <laughs> I prefer neither. Okay. Right? But the pro problem with you is that you seem to think. Mm -hmm. Right? I bet you, if you. None of those big wigs in our society. Uh -huh. would be content with having the police treat them like that. But you are content with the police treating you like that. Right? So, Mr. Perkins, you're uh -huh. satisfied with the crime rate in this country, do you? What? Do you satisfy with the high crime rate in no. this country year, year no. after year? I'm not. What, put forward a solution what they can do about it and let me hear that. Probably, I'm but I've talked program. about it over and over on this program. I so. don't hear you come up with a specific solution that the police can use. I never hear you say that. But I, I have said... And I'm, I'm, this is a new year and I, I have said one from you this week or today. I have said over and over on this program, sir, that the solution to the crime problem of this country is beyond the mere business of policing. The police cannot solve it. It's all of us. What? It's all of us. All of us. Right. <laughs> no, sir. What do you mean? All of us in our various ways. We're doing something about it, you know? Hold on, sir. Hold on. 
the people who have the power, the more power one has, mm -hmm. the more responsibility one has. Yes. Right? The people, the people who need to do something to solve the problem yes. are the people who, the, who, were, who were elected uh, by the Jamaican electorate, right? For yeah, the, talking to about govern the government and the opposition. What? You yeah, are talking about the government and the opposition. I'm talking about the government. The government is the people who have the power, not the opposition. But they are to cooperate. What? They are to cooperate in dealing with this thing. Do you hear Mr. Golden say that? Uh, well, I mean, of course, the, the people should give their cooperation. Where that cooperation is due. Mm -hmm. But part of the problem is that you, you are being asked to cooperate peop with people whom you don't trust. And with well, good reason. That's why, well, do, well, Mr. President, you cannot say the government is not doing anything about the people you don't trust because, yes, they are corrupt police. You know, the government, you see what they are doing, they are taking a step now to try to weed out. The Hold on a minute. How long have, has there been, have there been corrupt police? It's getting worse and worse. How Mr. long have we been Start talking? From, Hold on. Uh -huh. How long have we been talking in this country? About the problem police. of corrupt police. It's man. a long time, sir, but it's a not long time. School, it's not and minuscule. the government has, hold on, this government has been in office for 18 years? Mm -hmm. And they're just about to start doing something about it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but something needs, it's getting worse, Mr. Perkins. Now you know it's getting worse. It's getting very, very worse, right? It's with a of course. proportion. But the thing to do was not to wait until it got very, very worse to start doing something about it. Yeah, but right now, Mr. Perkins, there are a lot of police in prison. You, you don't know that. A lot of what? There are a lot of police in prison right now for corruption. Mm. I don't know about a lot. Well... But the, the, I, the, the government ought to have been doing something long ago, something effective to put an end to corruption on the scale in the police force. A. B. The government ought to have done something long ago to prevent, to deal with the pro specific problem of police abusing power. Yes, yes, I right? agree. They have been killing people in this country for years. Yes, Many yes. of them in highly suspicious circumstances. Right? But the government has not set up a system for ensuring that when something like that happens, there is a proper investigation, the evidence is presented in court, and if the man is guilty, he's convicted and sent but, to prison. But that's why the BSI was set up, that's why the um, professional responsibility was set up. Yes, but who is the BSI? Uh -huh. Who is BSI? What? Yes, I not the poor police. Um, you yes, know, but, but, but then you heard Mr. Patterson when he was Prime Minister say, that a corrupt police force cannot investigate corruption. Right, that's why that we talk about it now. In other words, a corrupt police force cannot investigate itself. We cannot rely yeah. upon a corrupt police force investigating corruption within the ranks of the police force in yeah. order to deal with it effectively. Sure. Yeah. So uh, is the government really serious about this? It seems so, Mr. Perkins. That's why they are trying to do something about it now. That's why they're trying? How long have they been trying, you say? <laughs> Come on. How long, Mr. Perkins? Look here. What I am saying, Mr. Hold Perkins, on a bit. What, what? Hold on a little bit. Yes. Which policeman, uh -huh. right, has gone to prison for, for killing a Jamaican man or person? in the course of his execution of his duty. Uh, well, uh, what is suppo his supposed execution of his duty? Well, I Which cannot one? I cannot tell you hmm? that uh, I, can, I remember police from gone to prison for that. You remember know some? Excel, you know, know, so, you know of some horrible killings uh -huh. that have occurred in this country. 
cried out no police. Policeman has been expelled for it. Even eh? I know policeman has been ex expelled, expelled from the force for that. I, know, <laughs> I, I am not sure. I, I remember they gone to prison for it. It, mm. it might have been, but you know. You heard I'm about afraid. the you heard about the Crowell case. Yes, man. You heard about the um the Johnny Salen case. Yes, son. You heard about the um Michael Gill case. Yes, yes, man. I got a barrett all of them, man. Well, I got a yes. Yeah, man. I know about all of them. Yes, but no, no convictions. No, we no, no. I am. I agree. You heard about Britain? Hello. You heard about Britain? Oh, yes, man. Yes, man. Huh? And yes, yeah. man. And, you know, me call and talk about all of them. Yeah. But what I said, hold hold on a little bit for me. Okay. Thank you very much. We're back with you. Uh, hello? Okay. Hello? Um, hello? You've gone about his business. Okay. <clears throat> um... I wonder if people do not... Uh, first of all, um, people in Jamaica need to develop self-respect. Right? They need to respect themselves and others who look like them, as well as all the other citizens and peoples of the country. If we had a police force in which people could have confidence, right, they would be far more inclined to cooperate with the police. And not only that, if people had opportunity, if government was about ensuring, the, first of all, the education of its people, and secondly, created an environment in which into which people were always prepared to invest, people with capital and technology and whatever, right? I think that crime would go down to very little. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. How good are you? Morning, Mr. Perkins. How are you? Class Not Mullings too bad. Here. Mr. Mullings, good morning. Uh, How are good morning. You? All the best. For the Happy New year. new year to you. Oh, thank you so much. I, I don't know if uh, New Year, Happy New Year will be available, but... Well, you know how it is, Mr. Perkins. We say these things as a matter of course. <laughs> the best that there is. Yes. Yes. But, uh, Mr. Perkins, when I call you, it is clear now that this is an election year. Yes. And I've always said that an election year is good because all of a sudden, roads are supposed to be fixed. Uh oh And everybody... That's going to take a lot of fixing. I would think so. And, you know, one of the things as a member of parliament, I'll tell you, that you will clamor and beg and plead. Because, in fact, in my own constituency of West Central St. James, um, I even have on the order paper of parliament, um, noting the situation of some housing schemes and their roads, you know, uh -huh. because you have a number of housing schemes that have not been handed over. And so their roads are in a deplorable condition. Uh -huh. And in point of fact, I highlighted two schemes for me. The one is the Pit 4 housing scheme, and the other is the Cassie Hall housing scheme. Uh -huh. And I we're frequently told, oh, there's no money. But I gather last week that uh, the minister, the state minister, Mr. Azan, paid a, a visit to my constituency. You know, and I, I gather too that he is indicating that his roads are going to be fixed. And you know, so uh, the reason I raise it, and I, I say it rather lightly, but I'm very serious about it, is that all country of people have to be dealt with. Oh, no, I'm not telling respect. you very clear. Our people must be dealt with greater respect. You yeah. know, each time we come in election year, all of a sudden, uh -huh. money is said to be found to correct all the ills. And then for succeeding... Mr. Mullings. Yes. Our people need to develop respect for themselves. Yes, absolutely. That is where the problem lies. Yes. They have no respect for themselves, and therefore they have no respect for anything that look like them, and therefore they are willing for all sorts of abuses to be carried out against people who look like them. Yes. Right? 
But I'm still heartened because I do believe now that people are becoming wiser. Are they? I, 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 I love to believe that because okay. if not, then all will be lost. Uh -huh. And I believe too that whatever happens, when a government is failing with their basic responsibilities, be it security, be it infrastructure, then that government ought not to be rewarded for their failure. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you have to guard against is a situation where those things which are to be expected of government, that proper roads, not a benefit, mm -hmm. it is to be expected of government. Those things are not to be used now as some vote-catching measure. And I, I raise this up because many times we speak about development and we mistakenly believe that development is the mere improvement in infrastructure. Development deals with how your human resource can themselves develop to push their country forward. Uh -huh. But you don't have that. And so we have a situation where government now believes that when they dole out at election time, mm. be they doling out in patching a road here or there or laying a pipe, yes. then that is enough to get the votes to perpetuate themselves yes. in office. But ultimately, it comes back to my point. Yes. That if the people of Jamaica had high self-esteem and, un and f understood that what they need from government is more than that kind of Sam fire trickery. Yes. Right? Yes. Then that would not work. Yes, indeed. Indeed. And I believe now, I'm hoping that it doesn't. Because if you, what we have noticed is that in certain constituencies, including my own and, and some others, that they think they're going to target now for the election purposes, all of a sudden resources are going to be made available. And people must wise up to this kind of three-card trick that is being played. Uh -huh. In my own area of Catherine Hall, for instance, I had to secure some private um, assistance. No sooner than we started work on it, we see them coming in with the minister and the, and the, the, the PNP caretaker, saying, well, we're going to fix the roads, don't do measurements. While for years they've been clamoring and nothing has happened. Uh, you know, Mr. Perkins, it, it is something that... <laughs> We have to change the politics, to change the mindset. Well, let me ask you something. Yes. You don't see the opposition as having a role yes. in changing that politics. Absolutely. But I haven't heard that coming out of them. Oh, yes. Have they? Oh, yes. Because I, I'll indicate, for instance, that in many of the, the debates that we've, we've been having... I'm not hearing you clearly. Many of the debates we've been having yes. in the parliament centers around this, the thing where you try, you must deal with on an equal basis everybody, no matter what their political persuasion in terms of their basic infrastructure. Yes, but my, my point is different. Yes. Everybody, irrespective of their political persuasion, yes. should respect themselves. Yes. Right? And respect their fellow Jamaicans. Yes. And should recognize that what they are about is not getting, or should be about, yes. is not getting a nanny here and there, but ensuring the development of Jamaica, and that if Jamaica is better off, then everybody, we all are going to be better off. Absolutely. And right? education plays a key role in that. An opportunity for those who have been educated, because yes. what has been happening that we have been educating some, the minority, yes. who now will have to seek opportunities abroad because of our own failure to develop our, our economy uh -huh. and our society. Well, you know, Mr. Mullings, yes. when I was a youngster, you see, people were talking in this country, not about economic growth, you know, but about economic development. Yes. Right? Yes. When I hear people talking these days, economists and all them other kind of people talking these days. The impression that I get is that what they're talking about is how to sort of, you know, put, put pretty up the, the donkey cart, give it a few pots of paint and, you know, change a little board here and there and get the wheel working properly and, and the donkey, you know, a little grass and all this kind of thing. Yes. Right? We are not talking about how to transform a donkey cart economy. Yes. 
into a highly technological economy, yeah. right? With, uh, uh, with industrialization and all this kind of thing. Which creates right? its, own dy- its own dynamism. For, where? More We're not talking about that, right? Yeah. We're talking about 2%. Well, we think we might have 3% growth this year or some rubbish like that, right? It's, it's almost... Uh, uh, it's much of it, we hope, yeah. coming from a, 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 a bankrupt um, industry like um, like sugar, yeah. which depends upon the, uh, the subsidy of the Europeans yeah. to survive. What kind of rubbish is that? Yes, and you know, it, it's almost like the, the person who is sick... And then the government, the doctor, looks at the patient and says, but you're lucky that you're not dead. Yes. And therefore, we are happy that we're not dead. Uh-huh. Not realizing that we're nowhere near full health, as we ought to be. But, yeah, you know, uh-huh. so it, 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 there is something rotten in the state of this country. It's it rotten in our heads, mister. Our yeah. problem is in our heads. Yes. Right? Yeah. Our problem is in our heads. In the, we... we, we came out out of the plantation system. Yes. And on the plantation, the people who lived in the great houses were owed every every respect and they were they were um, had power and they had rights and all this kind of thing. The people who lived in the barracks were barely human beings. Yes. And that that paradigm continues to this day in Jamaica. Which explains, Mr. Perkins, yeah. why at election time, our state minister and ministers will go around now, throw in the crumbs, and say, oh, we're going to fix your road. And by virtue of that, expect to perpetuate themselves. Because well, them they don't have to fix the road if them get a man a plate of curry goat. Yes. And, and two nanny. Yes. <laughs> right? That ensures his vote. Yes. Which, is a, which tells you the value that he puts upon himself. Indeed. Right? And the content that they have for the people. Well, when there they you are. This. But you know, sir, I'm going to prepare a long list. And hopefully, in their, in their efforts to perpetuate themselves, they've fixed these rules that have been clamoring for for so long. But you know, sir, another thing that I find interesting is that some time ago I had asked questions in Parliament about the Petcom board. Yes. And some contracts that were awarded at the time. And the minister replied, indicating that um, no future chairman of a board would be entitled to a contract from any entity doing business with that board or with that company. But that he reserved the situation for board, ordinary board members who would have the ability to do so, which took strong exception. I see now where the contractor general is tabling in parliament tomorrow. Yes. a report into what took place at Petcom. And I gather he has said that it con- it contains grave issues, but until it is tabled, he could say nothing further on it. Yes. The fact of the matter, Mr. Perkins, is that our processes have been corrupted by government, which is so powerful, that believes you can't do anything. Yes. Hold on just a moment. Okay, thank you very much. We're back with you, sir. Yeah, yes, Mr. Perkins. Uh-huh. So what we have now is a situation where you'll find that for electioneering purposes, all of a sudden, you're turning on pipes and fixing roads and going around, not declaring an election campaign, but doing that. I remember during the last election, all of a sudden, we had a lot of um, advertisements from government agencies uh-huh. indicating all the things that, were, that had happened and were done. That's a corrupting of the process. Yes. And we have to realize the nation that if we don't stop this, if we don't stop this, then the continued arrogance... But that requires, that requires leadership. Yes, sir. And it seems to me that it is something for the for the opposition to take up yes. and to be telling people um, that that is not what they should be expecting of government whether that government is of the PNP or of the JLP absolutely right and that they they, they should be voting in an election not for the you're not asking them to vote for the JLP 
right? Yes. You're asking them to vote for Jamaica. That's correct. Right? That's correct. But I don't hear those sounds coming out of the opposition. Well, you know, sir, we have been saying it. Maybe we need to speak much more consistently and more loudly on it. And I know that it's an issue that's going to be canvassed and dealt with even more so in Parliament, but also on the highways and byways to enlighten our people that if you are forgotten for 17 years, yes. no government ought to benefit from that. I think the most important thing in Jamaica today, sir, yes. is to build on the people of this country. Yes. Forget about sugar and bauxite for the moment. Yes. I mean, you know, when I say that. But Singapore but doesn't have that. Think of the people of Jamaica. Yes. Why is it, for example, that schooling is such seems such a difficult thing to obtain? Yes. Right? Why aren't we having and, and, and have not set out to have in this country a highly educated population? Yes. Right? Why? Is it that we find it easier to fool them up if them if if them if they're not educated? But but it's exactly it. It it is easier to do that, and so in doing that, you maintain the plantation, and you maintain the slaves in the field. That's what is happening, and we have to change that and tackle it and reveal it and expose it. Because well, you know, it, it, it is, it's amazing to me that a government that has failed to put this country on the road to development, that has failed to make their people secure. I, I tell you something, Mr. Mullings. This country was on the road to development back in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. Yes. Right? It is, it is, um, it is, after, it is after the 60s yes. that it changed. It was hijacked and derailed. Right? And um, it still hasn't got back on the, on that rail. No, indeed so. Right? Indeed so. But I, I, I had to express my concerns, you know, yes. with, the, with the Jamaican public uh -huh. and the people of my constituency. I'm going to present the minister with, with my entire wish list. I, I'm sure now that he will satisfy and deal with them because, as I said before, it's an election year. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, sir. Thank and you very much. All the best to you. Okay, hello? Hello? I'm not hearing you. Or oh, you're talking to somebody else? Hello? Hello, morning, Sir King. Morning, Mom. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, I need some advice from you. Okay, uh, My sister-in-law, mother... Ah. She works with one of those big hotels in St. Anne. Your sister-in-law's no, mother. Okay, yes. Yes, my sister-in-law's mother. No, works yesterday at the hotel. Right, at one of those big hotels in St. Anne. Uh -huh. No, she works in the laundry room, and yesterday she had an accident with one of the machines, one of the pressing machines, I think. Her hand got stuck in it, and it was stuck in there for over an hour. So her hand was completely cooked. What? Right? Yes, sir. And Why was it stuck for over now? Well, I get what, I, what, I, what we were told was that they couldn't get her hand out. They had to call the fire brigade, and I think the fire brigade came from another parish and had to cut out the machine or something like that. But her hand was in there for about an hour, her right hand, and it was completely cooked. I don't. I think they might have to amputate it or something like that. They, they, she was airlifted to University Hospital because they couldn't do anything down at St. Hansby Hospital. Now, what I need to know is that the, the hotel, the center manager, I don't, I don't think he's really high up in any authority now. They're saying that she's covered with insurance and they're going to pay her hospital bill and she will get her weekly pay while she's in the hospital. No, she won't be able to use her hand again as far as we're concerned, as far as what the doctor has told us, because the hand might have to be amputated or something. But even if it doesn't cut off, she won't be able to use it again. No, I'm sure that this hotel probably have their lawyers and their behalf working out whatever they can that they won't be getting into any farm or trouble now. I need to know what we can do because she's a, oh, she has two small children. She do, she have to pay her rent. She won't be able to use her hand again. And I'm sure that even if she gets better, she, may, she won't be able to work back at the hotel. Uh -huh. So we need to know what we can do because I'm sure the hotel probably have their lawyer working out their side of the story. Yes. Well, you obvious, the, the, the answer is obvious. 
You need a lawyer to work out your side of the story. And if, which well, we have been trying to get her. The daughter. question is though, how did this come to? Ha how did it happen? Well, well, from what I heard, the machine was malfunctioning. Right, the machine is a malfunctioning machine, and what I was told is that um, something fell from off the machine, and she bent down to pick it up, and she just felt her hand being stuck into the machine. Oh. So that was that is all. Well, she that is all I was told. No, I guess the, to how the manager or whatever he is was speaking, he was saying that she put her hand in the machine to retrieve something. No, I don't think any sensible person would put their hand into an industrial machine. To and receive it, something? To retrieve anything at all. What do you mean you receive it? A, I don't, I, I have no idea what, that's what he said, and, and I, he wasn't even there. Uh -huh. Right, but I guess from I heard that I realized that they're trying to cover their side. They're, they're trying to make sure that there's nothing wrong on their side. Uh -huh. But I am telling her daughter that since she got damaged on work, and her, she won't have any use at all for her hand. She has two small children, and even if they pay her a weekly pay, which is, a, is, is not it, it's not even $6,000 a week. She has two small children, she has a rent to pay, and even if they pay her, continue to pay until she's out of the hospital. What happened after that? Because she got damaged on work and a malfunctioning machine. Yes. And and we don't I don't hear we don't hear anything from any um any big this man is just a, I think he's a security manager or something like that. We don't hear anything from anybody higher up in authority. Uh -huh. We don't hear anything from them so far. Are we hearing from I, I think I think you need to consult to get yourself a good lawyer. Okay? And is there anybody you can recommend? Um well I'm not in the business of 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 doing that, I mean, you know. Because but, um, we, uh, we, we tr we're actually trying to, to get a lawyer. We, we, um, somebody's on the road right now because her daughter is the, is the only one in Kingston now where she is, and she's on the road now trying to get a yeah. lawyer. Because I Hold on a moment. We have to take a break. Okay. Thank you very much. We're back online. Hello? 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 Yes. Is, is that Mr. Parkin? Yes, it is. Hey. Good morning. Morning to you, Mom. I'm just asking your assistance here if, if you can help uh -huh. because I've got a, um, a prob more or less a problem. I've had a brother died. Uh -huh. Do you take this subject now? Do, do I take what? Do, can you take this subject because you're on a different subject? You're talking on a different subject. Can you take this one? I don't follow you. Okay. What right. is the difference of it? No, you was talking about the, 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 this. Um, theater more or less of the country, something like that, and I'm coming in with the death of a brother. Yes, well, let's hear what you have to say. Okay, yes. I've had a brother died. And Speak up a bit for me. Yes, my brother died uh -huh. under cir um, a suspicious circumstances, and um, no one never came up with the answer to how he died, but when he was found, his neck was broken. Uh -huh. And... Um, Many people saw him in that state and condition. When and did this happen? Pardon? When did this happen? It happened on the 23rd, 24th of December. Of December? Yes. And he was found? And he was found on his, on his bed with his neck broken. Uh-huh. And... Where? In what sort of circumstances? Well, we don't know because when he was found, his neck was broken. He was lying on his bed. On his bed? On his bed, with his neck broken. Uh huh. And it more or less, it's it twist around the front to the back and the back to the front. That's what I was told. Uh huh. And um, well, the police took him and he went to the, the morgue. And um, the, the autopsy was done last week, Thursday. Uh huh. And the doctor came up with uh, some, with um, the conclusion that he had a blood clot. There, it, it's a blood clot that killed him. A blood clot? Yes, in the head, that killed him. And and the the um the, everybody saw the head because when he, when the brother went to the the morgue to see the, his brother died and there. He called him as if he was alive and hold his head, and his head was just wobbling around like that of a rock doll. And 
you know, to hear that the pathologist came up with the the, the diagnosis that his, he died from a blood clot, I can't understand. And I would like to know if I can take it any further because I was being told that I cannot go above the doctor. So I would like to know if there is any way that I can go above it. Uh -huh. Because we are, we are not satisfied with it because we were told yes. that a man was talking how the person who done it was told him how it is he who killed him. And the man who talk, who talk what the man said, he but was is it crying. likely? Pardon? Oh, is it likely? That if somebody had murdered your brother, yeah. he would go talking about how he did it? Most likely, you never know. Oh? Most likely. Oh. You know, because there are times when people, you know, want to make a boast and of something. Oh, they well, might that, say something. Well, that's a, a dangerous kind of boast to be making. Yes, but he was told in front of people, some one who could, maybe they would not want to be involved, but someone, well, I wouldn't say in high society, uh -huh. but someone above us, you know, as the deceased um, relative, some, he, was, he was talking to someone who heard, two people were there when this man was telling him, was talking when uh, that man who killed him, the man, uh -huh. who killed my brother. And that man heard, and another person heard when he was told, you know, that he... Well, did. I tell you something. Yeah. Uh, you need legal, to take legal advice mm -hmm. on this. When, uh, okay. Legal, legal advice. But yeah. when I called the, the undertaker and uh, suggested this matter to him about going further with it, go above this decision. Oh. He said that um, he can, it cannot be done now because the body has been embalmed. And so it becomes very hard, you see. Oh, he has been embalmed now? Yes, the body has been embalmed because he was died from um, 23rd of December. Oh, I see. And the post-mortem was done on Thursday, and he said... And he was embalmed when the post-mortem was done? No, after the post-mortem oh. was done. After the post-mortem... Well, I tell you something. Mm -hmm. um, you need to take legal advice on this. Okay. Right? I'm not a lawyer. I can't tell you. Okay. Okay? Okay. All the best to you. All right, then. Thank you. And I'm sorry to hear about it. Bye-bye. Okay, hello? Hello, Mr. Perkins. Hi, comrade. How are you? Oh, um, I don't know. Well, I'm good and I'm bad. Ah. I would like to call I see you accept the, the title. The Farkas Institute of... I see you've accepted the title. <laughs> comrade. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, and I will That's make sure we know. Look here. The Farkas Institute of Public Affairs yes. had a most brilliant article in yesterday's observer. About the um, justice system yes. and all of right? Yes. And in this morning, and I would like to compliment Mr. Frank Phipps, uh -huh. because the chairman's part of the article, the man was superb in his usual erudite fashion, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really good, you know. That is what makes you feel good to be a Jamaican, you know. That is what makes you feel good to be a black man, because black men have brains and black men have on, principles. Sir. But there was no, there was no doubt mm -hmm. that black man is a human being. Yes, black and, man and have brains. Yeah, exactly. The problem is that black man not using <laughs> his abilities, not yes, in this country. Yes, right. And, you know, Mr. Perkins, this morning... And and you talk about that article by by, by Mr. Phipps. Yes. By, well, by the Farkas Institute. Yes. Uh, yeah, right? Uh, uh -huh. But, and there are there are some other people. Yes. Like um, Carolyn Gomes yes, and yes, yes. Um, Yvonne Sobers yes. and people like those. Yes, uh -huh. Right? Mm -hmm. But and how many week, of them are there in, yes, in Jamaica? Last week, uh, Mr. Crosby right? wrote a sensible article and I complimented him. But, Moti, I'd like to read this one in today's Observer by Mr. Clayton A. Morgan, yes. attorney at law in Montego Bay. Yes. It reads, in the head, head it is, No, my lord. Dear editor, Mr. Justice Mahadev Dukarad is quoted in the Observer of January 6th as saying, uh -huh. If the law says one and one makes two, only legislation can change it. 
end of quote. Uh -huh. The judge was reported uh, <laughs> speaking at a spirited ceremony. Yes. He goes on to say, this statement should not be left unchallenged. I submit that one of the duties of judges is to be instruments of change in the country. Uh -huh. They should not be afraid to challenge the legislation process if, in their opinion, same is inimical to the best interests of citizens. Therefore, if the law says that one on one make three, a judge should say that is wrong. The late Lord Denning was a great believer in the independence of judges. Some of our own judges have exhibited great independence of thought and are reluctant to slavishly follow certain acts of Parliament. If Mr. Justice Dukaran is correct, then indefinite detention would still be lawful. I end by quoting from the dissenting judgment of Mr. Justice Roy Jones in the now famous or infamous, in brackets, Janice Allen case, brackets, of which coincidentally Mr. Justice Dukaran delivered a majority judgment. Quote from Mr. Jones, when the integrity of the administration of justice is at stake, as it is now, this court has a duty to unleash its inherent powers, to maintain its authority, to prevent its process from abuse, and keep the stream of justice pure. Mr. <laughs> Farkas and the other people who you called Jamaicans for justice, but it is good that somebody else is taking up and see these things, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. And I think it, it, give, it should give the impetus to others to continue the fight. Right? Well. No. Now, over the weekend, I heard on the radio that the National Housing Trust was invested 350 million U.S. dollars, or 23 billion 450,000. 23 billion 450 million Jamaican dollars to invest in a retirement colony for the rich retired American people. No, Mr. President. For what? Yes. And they said that they, they'll start the project and when they finish it, they expect private sector to come and take up the investment. <laughs> no, Mr. President. National Housing Trust money. The National Housing Trust. <laughs> <laughs> and good God, Port Maria, they had us uh, came with joint. They were joint. And leave the Port Maria people flooded out now and in the misery. Eh? You, Mr. Perkins, are you are taking up poor people well, money. That, that shit we're in this harmony called Sister foolishness. Sister Peel loves poor people, you know, sir. Eh? Eh? What, what about this harmony cove that we hear everything about? The, this billion dollar investment of these super rich coming down here and they go park them yacht and park themselves and the little Jamaica sleep. Black people will come and turn nanny for them, pick the all and then they have foolishness. <laughs> eh? Eh? And when, when domestic helpers want to benefit from National Housing Trust, they can't get it. They don't qualify. But they are, these are these people catering to the rich and powerful of the world. Eh? And when the, this thing to help the Jamaican poor black people, they can't help them. Eh? Why you know, the, sir? Go ahead, tell you. I can't. Here, I'm angry, he, Mr. Perkins. Here is it. We are importing rich Americans. Yes. For all Jamaican women. Yes. To become domestic servants to, yes. Um, yes. to you know, uh, look about their children and so on. Right. Um, you know, say if you're in Singapore <laughs> and you need so a domestic import servant. Domestic servant. You have importer, you know. Yes. And what, you know, them, Mr. Perkins, I Nobody to do them kind of job over there. Hey, to digress right? a little bit, as we talk about Singapore, the latest thing is that Vietnam is going to be the coming power. Develop will be the fastest developing country, you know. Who is that? What is it? Vietnam. 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 Yes, Mr. Yes. Perkins. Yes. And I notice, you know, China now not trade union. Vietnam now not trade union. Singapore country. You know, the credit, the trade unions are the greatest deterrent to investment in this country. I think that you have something there, sir. Trade unions are the greatest yes. deterrent. Well, you know that in Singapore, development of this country. In, in Singapore, um, Lee Kuan Yew brought about the development of his country, partly by restricting the 
the yes, trade union. Unions. Yes, Mr. Park. Of which he himself what was a trade union leader. Yes. But we could see far. He had a vision for his people, you know. Yes. These union leaders only have a vision for themselves. Yes. You know what I mean? You know, and so that is why they don't represent. They and used to they be. They represent five percent of the Jamaican working people, you know. They used to be a gentleman here. Uh, in the American, we worked in the American Embassy. Yes. Right. He was he, one of the officers of the American Embassy. Yes. Right? And he used he was when he was here, he he was single. Yeah. Right. He used to put on the most wonderful dinner parties. Yes, I've heard it. Right? Yes. Twenty people and so on. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think beautifully done. Yeah. Right? And I said to him one evening, um, how, how, how do you manage to do this? I mean, you're a single man and, you know. He said, oh, it's had nothing to do with me, man. He says, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm going out of the morning and I re get out of the car and I remember that I, I didn't see something I had to tell Miss Lou. And I go back and I call and I say, Miss Lou, um, you know, I forgot to tell you, I'm having 20 people to dinner tonight. Yes. And he said, having said that, he'd turn around and go back to the car, go do the American people work. Yes. Right? And when he comes in, at, 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 in the evening and the people start turning up, Everything is flawless. They don't, don't. It, right? Flawlessly. And who is Miss Lou? Yeah. An ordinary Jamaican woman. Jamaican woman. Right? Right. Now, yeah. oh, she, she don't need no trade union. No, right? not at all. Because... Mutti, eh? it's from Michael Mann. They came with them, labor industrial, and it's the um, whole heap of food for law about uh, maternity. Yes. Law, but that is where investment starts to yes, leave Jamaica. Yes. You know. And that one of the, the things... That is the beginning of the contraction of the Jamaica. The one of the things about, the trade, about trade unionism yes. that is not understood in this country. If you and I work uh -huh. in a factory... And we are excellent right? workers. Well, let us say that you are an excellent worker and highly productive. Yes. And I am damn lazy. We cater to the lowest. Our salaries are in. identical. You're right. So right? why should I because work Because it's collective hard. bargaining. Right. You realize that you are subsidizing me. Of course. Okay. Yes. Hold on just a moment for me. Okay. Thank you very much. We're back with you. Yeah, Mr. Uh, look here. You are subsidizing me. Yes. And then ultimately you recognize that here is this fellow, mm -hmm. damn lazy, not doing half the work he could do, right? But he getting the same pay as you. <laughs> so what do you do? You, you start stacking. Yeah, you start So productivity stacking. goes down. Right. Right? Goods get nearer and you come out of business. Absolutely. Yeah, right? Uh, but you know, Mr. Perkins, they talk about China, how oh, China leap in that thing, right? So those Chinese workers will become like the Singaporean workers, you know, some of the highest paid workers in the year. Yes. In the world. Yes. You understand? Yes. And when you come here, why are Americans rushing in droves, flying over Jamaica, thousands of miles to Vietnam, number one? They don't know, so most of them don't speak English. Why they leave a country like Jamaica, where the climate is good, where the people speak English? Where they are intelligent, Jamaicans are very intelligent, easily trained and everything. Yes. So why are they making investment decisions by passing Jamaica? You, don't you notice, sir, how the de development in the world today seems to be centered in the eastern... Um, Pacific region. East Pacific? Yeah. Right? You notice that? Yes, yes. But Where they have... They have um, a culture or, or cultures that are, you know, yeah. um, as any as any as anybody done. Well, they encourage hard work. Yes, yes. Right. Uh huh. And that is what, what that is where the capital is going. Yeah, and Monty, has any study been done? Really, why these com these companies? Goodyear, etc., etc., Rexton, uh -huh. Coleman, 
We just all of them quietly draw down their shutters and manufacture it in Jamaica and move out of the country. Yes. Is it a direct result of the labor laws that take with the several, these it, several it, peers and the workers' job is his property? It is a very complex it, matter, sir. Eh? Right? It has to do with, you know, Lee Kuan Yew, when he came here, yeah. um, had a comment to make in his book that uh, about Jamaicans he said how oh, wonderful people we are you know we laugh and we sing and we dance and so on and mm -hmm. very friendly and so on mm -hmm. hard work we left behind us with slavery <laughs> I suppose the legacy right. of the slavery but to come back to the thing and, and that woman who was speaking to Mrs. Gloudon yeah about right? five you know the, the perception yeah. that some of these people have you know you you talk about, I mean, PhDs and all that. PhDs in Jamaica don't seem to understand the, what this woman was talking about. No, no. When she's no. telling Mrs. Gluten how oh, the Chinese then can't walk with Mrs. Gluten. They no, walk till they start to drop down with Mrs. Gluten. One Chinese can do five smarty walk. Yeah. Right? But Where Perkins. are all the PhDs? Why they don't see that? And why don't they understand that if one Chinese can do five smarty walk? Where is the capital going to go? Where one, sorry, if not to China. China. Exactly. Right? Exactly. You know? But again, Mr. Perkins, when the Jamaicans migrate to America and England and all of that, what Jamaica do five and smarty walk to you? That know? is true too. Right? So why but what is that? No, no. But it's a, a change of the cultural environment. And what we have in Jamaica is not that, is not that Jamaicans are lazy. No. Right? It is that if you are in a cultural environment that encourages laziness, then you're going to behave lazily. Yeah, because, you know, I heard you spoke, mm, speak about this thing with the cremo thing, with the man sleeping yes. on the job. And how in heaven's name can a responsible union bring a strike at a place where the people have fired this man was sleeping at the job. Which responsible union you're talking about? It was the NWU. <laughs> 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 Uh, they dress up in their grey flannel suit and go, hey, the workers this and the workers that. Uh -huh. Yes, they live high off the hog, but the workers, the jobs getting scarcer and scarcer. Yes. They don't have any vision. Yes. And their boy, they could bad with things tight now. And well, they said 10, 20, 30 years, we will be here, sir. I tell you, know? you something, sir. They have no vision. I am tired of repeating it. And, um,. I'm sure that there are people who are tired of hearing me repeat it, right? But Mr. Paulwell, possibly yes. the most intelligent statement he has ever made. No, no, right? no, Motti. What? The only. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. But Mr. Paulwell said in Parliament one night, right, that this is not a place that is friendly to investment. Yes. True. Right? True, and true. how are you going to get a country to develop without investment, without high know. levels of investment? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That is... Yeah. So what we need to do, if, 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 if I were a prime minister and heard one of my ministers saying something like this, it would seem to me that this is something to be immediately investigated. Of course. What are the factors that are rendering this environment unfriendly to investment? Right. And we have to set about correcting them correcting. all immediately. Yes. Right? Yes. But, Marty, before I leave, this expenditure by the National Housing Trust, it building this three hundred. It's it talk about this three hundred and fifty million U.S. dollar investment for retirement colony. Yeah. It's an insult to the poor people who. Well, I want to the, I want to know, sir, whether a class action should not be taken out yes. against something like this. Yeah. How can the government? And and this is one of the dangerous signs yeah. of Sister P's government. Yeah. Right. They seem to have no respect for um, for the uh, the national. Well, these these things are called 
trust, eh? Yeah. The uh, National Housing Trust. No, they can take the money. Which is a trust fund. National Insurance Fund money. Created for a purpose. Yeah. Right? And they can take it and spend it however they like. Yeah, uh-huh. The law is of no consequence. No. And then, you know, much you wonder, who are going to get those contracts to make these big things? Well, right? right. And where is, is some of that money going to be used to kick back or anything? Yeah. Remember... But isn't Sister P taking some of the... Um, the... Uh, not the housing trust, the... NIS. NIS money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To run our beautification campaign. <laughs> right? And when is it going to start? Exactly. And when is it is Jamaica going to be beautified? <laughs> but you know, Monty, when you... I, I, you, you might think that I am petty. I am not petty. I born and grew in St. Mary. It was a wonderful part. Still a wonderful part. But when I see the undevelopment, Monty, uh-huh. and when I see something came, because I was at a meeting where they presented this lovely plan for, you know, that plan would have lifted the culture, you, you know, lifted the horizons of those people. They would give them a nice, clean thing with swimming pool and gardens and all of that, you know, yes. and, and encourage them to keep it clean. You understand? So it takes them out of the miasma of poverty and degradation that they are presently married. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it would lift the whole tone of the parish. And Port Mary and Nottabia could... Have you ever been to Nottabia and see the type people use... I understand, on the seaside part, use... Still use the scandal bags, Mutti. Yes. To, to get rid of the offal. Uh, you yes, know. but but how are we going to get Jesus beyond that? Christ, so, if we, you know, one of our problems uh, is, you see, boy. Karl Marx said a couple of centuries ago, well, middle of the 19th, 20th, no, more than a century ago, yes, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well over a century. Yeah. Um, that how men organize to produce to produce yeah. mm-hmm. the means of their subsistence uh-huh. constitutes the fundamental relations of society of course right yeah but we are beyond that yeah mm-hmm. we have a brilliant man yeah. right the greatest finance minister we have <laughs> ever had and he thinks that Marx was talking damn nonsense. How men organize right? to borrow. How men organize to borrow the means of their subsistence yes, yes. constitutes yes. fundamental. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him making that speech that he is very pleased with what he has done to the Jamaican economy yes. at 2006 and we are poised now for Christmas. And I hear people well, talking I, tell you. I hear people talking glibly about um, mm. What is it? Consumer confidence and yeah. business confidence yeah. and, and all this kind of rubbish. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Look, what we have is, yeah. a, is the economic equivalent of a donkey cart. Yeah. Worse than that, but right? it's worse than that. It's what, worse we, than that. what we need to be thinking about is not how to make that donkey, improve that donkey cart, but, the cheer, the but how to throw it away and get yeah. a modern... Um, 18 wheel motor vehicle. Yeah. Right? Y- you know, I heard. Well, hold on just a moment. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, all right. It's time for the news. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, I didn't realize that. Good, good. I didn't have my glasses on. I'm, I'm sorry. We have to break in. We'll be back here in about um, 20 minutes. Environment Minister Dean Peart is later this week expected to meet with management personnel of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, to discuss the findings of a report into the agency's operations. Mr. Peart says the management of the NSWMA will be submitting its recommendations at the meeting. In September, the fraud squad was called in by the authority's board to investigate the spending of about $20 million in less than a year. The fraud squad had also indicated that its investigations into the allegations would be referred to the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, for a ruling. The company's executive director, Errol Green, has been on leave since the investigations began. 
The opposition spokesman on national security, Derek Smith, says the findings of a recent poll, which shows that a majority of Jamaicans believe more than half the Jamaica constabulary force is corrupt, should be taken seriously. He was responding to the latest Glena commissioned Bill Johnson poll published in the six, also indicate that almost one in every two government employee is involved in shady dealings. Mr. Smith says he's also worried about the degree of dishonesty, he says, currently exists within the officer core of the JCF. The incoming government of the Jamaica Labour Party will do whatever it needs. If it needs amendment to the Constable Air Force Act and its regulation, if it means looking at the Police Service Commission, whatever it needs, we will have to do to ensure that persons who are identified being involved in corrupt practices are dismissed or retired in the public interest. Of course, it is not our intention to trample on any individual rights. In the meantime, Mr. Smith says the government should consider alternative approaches to tackling corruption in the force. I would suggest that they put some pressure on the professional standards branch. They put some pressure on the director of public prosecution. They put some pressure on the Police Services Commission. They are the three bodies principally involved in not only identifying of these individuals. Opposition spokesman on national security, Derek Smith. In the meantime, the 2005-2006 Lasco Top Cop is talking, taking issue with the latest poll. Detective Inspector Michael Grant believes the poll results are overstated. Well, I'm aware that we have court members among us, but this is a very strong statement, and I honestly don't think that so much of what hard-working policemen and women are corrupt. Based on my experience, the perception of members of... 2005-2006, Lasco Top Cop, Detective Inspector Michael Grant. More than 200 workers employed to Jamaica Premix Limited's 10 locations island-wide are now on strike. The workers who are, represented, who are represented by the National Workers' Union are protesting the decision by the company's management to make the positions of several employees redundant. The Deputy Island Supervisor for the NWU, Granville Valentine, has described the company's decision as unfair to the workers, some of whom have been employed for 30 years. It is unfortunate that these workers weren't there for many, many years, some up to 30, 30, 40 years. And their positions are being made redundant by a company which they have built to a stage where the company can stand on its own so well that they can be doing significant improvement in their different locations and different plans. While the company has not stated how many workers will be sent home, Mr. Valentine says several categories, including drivers and mobile pump operators, are to be affected. He has also taken issue with what he says is the short period of time given by the company for both parties to discuss the issue by Friday. The company also is quite unreasonable in giving the union four days to meet with them. We got the letter sometime midday on Friday. Based on our previous schedule, we cannot meet with this company during this time. The law allows for reasonable discussion to take place under the labor code. NWU Deputy Island Supervisor Grand Valentine. When the claims for increasing the income tax threshold should be made known later this week. Finance Minister Dr. Omar Davies says the decision to form the task force was made at the last meeting of the Memorandum of Understandings Monitoring Committee. He says the team is being assembled as the government was unable to meet the January 1 date for increasing the threshold from $193,440 to $270. The recommendation for the increase was put forward in the 2004 Matalon Committee Report. Dr. Davies says the committee had also suggested removing some allowances. The task force is also expected to examine the allowances and take action towards regularizing them. You're listening to Midday News on Power 106 from the Gleaner Power 106 News Center. It's seven and a half minutes after 12. 
Kingston Central Investigation Bureau is trying to find a man known as Bully in connection with the killing of one of two men in the corporate area yesterday. The dead men have been identified as 20-year-old laborer Sheldon Hunter of Text Lane and 24-year-old Quincy Davidson of Maiden Lane in Kingston. The police report that about 9.30 yesterday morning, Hunter was walking along Text Lane when two men approached him. One of the men reportedly held him while the other used a knife to stab him before they escaped on foot. He later died in hospital. In the other incident, Davidson was near Nethersall Place when he was reportedly approached by three men. One of the men allegedly pulled a gun and opened fire, hitting him before escaping on foot. The Lionel Town Police in Clarendon are trying to determine the circumstances surrounding the death of a fisherman in the parish yesterday. The body of 32-year-old Narence Barnes of Rocky Point was found with gunshot wounds at his house. The police report that a friend of Mr. Barnes went to visit him about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. On entering the house, he reportedly found Mr. Barnes' body on his bed with a number of gunshot wounds. Investigators say residents had reported hearing explosions prior to the discovery of the body. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, will be undertaking an island-wide earthquake simulation exercise on January 31. The exercise is part of activities to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the earthquake, which destroyed Kingston and Port Royal on January 14, 1907. It's being organized to follow Earthquake Awareness Week, which began yesterday under the theme, Prepare Now, Don't Wait, Be Ready for the Next Earthquake. Acting Director General at the ODPEM, Ronald Jackson, says the activity is aimed at facilitating a review of the National Earthquake Management Plan. A number of organizations in downtown Kingston are slated to participate in the exercise, while the main simulation sites in Manchester and St. Anne will be the Northern Caribbean University and the Brownstown Community College. Motorists using North Street in downtown Kingston are being advised to proceed cautiously as the National Works Agency has begun repairs on sections of that roadway. Manager of Communications and Customer Services Stephen Shaw says the NWA is repairing a section of North Street between Duke Street and South Camp Road at a cost of $20 million. The road work is expected to continue over the next three weeks. However, Mr. Shaw says motorists will be able to use the roadway while work is in progress. He is advising motorists to obey the instructions of flag persons and posted warning signs. President of the Caribbean Hotel Association Peter Odell has reiterated the call for CARICOM governments to appoint a Council of Ministers of Tourism to assist in the decision-making of tourism-related matters. He was speaking at the two-day meeting of the Caribbean Hotel Association's annual marketplace in Aruba. According to Mr. Odell, if the council had been instituted, then the controversy surrounding the visa requirement for visitors to the region for the Cricket World Cup would be avoided. But according to Barbados Deputy Prime Minister Mia Motley. With visitors coming from regions of conflict and strife, there are certain risks which must be evaluated and minimized. Suriname's Justice Minister Shandrika Prasad Santoki says fighting cybercrime in the country is posing a serious challenge to local authorities. He says it's extremely difficult to track down individuals who are committing internet fraud and other forms of cybercrime. Santoki told Parliament that local authorities, with the assistance from various international agencies, had recently carried out an investigation into two particular websites. And according to him, various official documents, including passports, birth certificates, and fraudulent financial arrangements were found. He believes that countries will only be able to deal with cybercrime through international cooperation. And in news further afield, two of Saddam Hussein's key aides have been hanged in Baghdad two weeks after the controversial execution of the former Iraqi president. Officials say there were no violations this time, but Saddam Hussein's half-brother Barzan al-Tikriti was decapitated as he was hanged. He and Awad Hamad al-Bandar, a top judge under Saddam's regime, were convicted over the killing of 148 Shias in the 1980s. The country's president, Jalal Talabani, had sought to have their executions delayed. Government officials say the decapitation of Barzan was not abnormal, although it was rare for the head to be severed during hanging.
nearly ice storms that have killed at least 21 people in the United States are continuing to batter the several churches, cancelled Sunday services, and businesses closed early or remained shut. Weather forecasters say the storm system will head northeast and could bring more than a foot of snow to New England. Ice storms occur when it rains during very low temperatures, causing it to freeze almost instantly as it hits a surface, resulting in ice layers, sometimes several inches thick. And those were the stories making midday news on Power 106. Midday Sports is next.